Thanks for inviting me. Hello, everyone. My name is Sasha Boldereva. I'm from Georgia Tech in the US. So today and tomorrow, we'll be talking about searchable encryption. And I will start with brief introduction to this topic, which I'm very interested in. I like it. I think uh, it's important nowadays. Uh, and uh, I want to start with uh, thanking my former students, Nate Chinat and David Cash, and also Mohammed Navid for borrowing some of their slides. I will use them later today. So let's start with motivation for searchable encryption. So the main motivation, the main buzzwords come to mind when we talk about searchable encryption, cloud storage. So, which is a very hot topic these days. Uh, why? Because outsourcing data is very, very popular. Uh, because users now have massive amount of information and they want to access it from various devices, from different places, different devices, and it's convenient to store the data somewhere in one place where it's accessible, in the cloud, for example. And also, you can outsource data management uh, to some data storage providers. So I have a couple of graphics explaining how cloud computing and storage works. This is one. And this is another good slide explaining everything about it. <laughs> so a little bit more seriously. Uh, so we have various uh, cloud storage providers nowadays. Um, and so let's think, so what do they offer? They offer uh, to store your data. And data can be of different types, pictures, files, documents, music, email, and so forth on a remote server. So in a little bit more abstract manner, so what is the setting? So we have a remote server which stores your data. As I said, it can be different format. General file format, Google Docs, and so relational databases. Uh, that's very common. Or any specific formats, emails, and etc. And what do we want? So the owner of the data need to be able to, in the first place, submit the data to the server, and later <coughs> query the server, ask the server to return certain parts of the data the user is interested in in the moment. And the user also need to be able to add more data to the server. OK, so that's the setting. And of course, we often care about security because the data can be sensitive, confidential, and sometimes security may be even required by law. For example, for medical data, there are HIPAA rules in the US. So, And we do not necessarily trust the server to read all our data. Or maybe we trust the server, uh, but we should be cautious about potential compromises to the server. Because servers can be subject to attacks. And there have been many attacks recently. OK, so we need security. And whenever we need security of the data, so before I said that, so briefly, what do we want? And informally, we want search functionality. We want to search the data. We want to do it efficiently, because we're really talking about practical applications, and we want security. Okay, So these three things very roughly. Whenever we want security of the data, the first thing which comes to mind is what? Encrypting the data, right? using encryption. We have the tools, so what is the problem here? Well, the problem here is that if you just take some of the shelf encryption scheme and encrypt all your data, 
for example, if we're talking about the relational database, we can, let's say, we encrypt each field independently with some secure good encryption scheme and the symmetric key setting we can use, let's say, AES block cipher and let's say CBC encryption mode. It's known to be good secure encryption scheme. We can encrypt each field, send it to the server, and the server who doesn't know the key, only you would know the key, will have no idea what, no information about your data. That sounds good to this point, but the problem comes when we want to query the data. When the user wants to query the data, and what, let's say, if it was some database of people names, and if, if we want to return, if the user wants to find all records corresponding to some particular name, if the user re-encrypts the data, the same name, let's say, and send it to the server, whatever stored on the server and what the user has, uh, the encryption is so good it's not usable. Because the standard encryption, it's randomized. If you encrypt the same name twice, the ciphertext going to be unrelated, and there is no way for the user of the server to relate the ciphertext. So good encryption, it's so good, it's not really functional in the way we want. You cannot, in general, compute on it. You cannot search on it just as is. So we, we need to do something more. So we can have security, but al almost no functionality here. And as we will see later, these three properties, security, functionality, and efficiency, uh, are always at odds with each other uh, when we're talking about search searchable encryption. So it's hard to balance. But we really want to find some of the right balance between security and functionality and efficiency. And a little bit more in what do we want. So as I said, we want a practical solutions. We want a efficiency. What does it mean? Usually we want search where on each query we do something faster than linear search, meaning we don't scan the whole document on each query. Uh, because for practical, there are huge databases, terabytes of record size, and so the, the practitioners say there is no way we're going to really do linear search on the whole data. And we cannot do a lot of interaction and communication and computation to process the search. And at the same time, we, want, we will see we cannot have the greatest security probably, but we still want well-defined notions of security, and we want a scheme which probably satisfy these notions of security. So uh, you probably all know about provable security. What does it mean? We want to have definitions of security and proofs by reduction that schemes satisfy uh, these <coughs> definitions under some assumptions we trust. OK, so let me continue with a very brief overview of existing solutions for searchable encryption without much detail and first and then we'll talk about it. So oblivious rep, uh, it comes from but now somewhat old world work of Goldrick Ostrovsky. Uh, so it is in theory applicable to the searchable encryption application. Uh, because, so it has really good security, it provides, it hides that data and what's even usually hard to do, it hides access pattern, the server cannot see which points, which records the user accesses on queries. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's not really efficient and requires quite large amounts of computation storage and multiple rounds of communication uh, to process queries. There are somewhat more recent works, uh, of course, on oblivious RAM, uh, improving security and improving efficiency, uh, most importantly. But still, so we have polylog overhead and communication and computation. And there are 
very big constants hidden in big O. So in practice, not really applicable for practical applications we focus on. And somewhat similarly, fully homomorphic encryption, um, the, it, it, again, in theory, it could solve the problem of searchable encryption because with it you can compute on encrypted data. And again, you would get very good security, but still, uh, it seems it's far from being practical. So the research on somewhat practical, on, on practical searchable encryption, uh, I can say uh, the work by Stone, Wagner, and Perrick from 2000, uh, it is much, much more practical uh, searchable encryption scheme. Uh, and it uses very efficient computation, pretty much PRFs, block ciphers, only symmetric encryption. Uh, so in principle, it is fast, but if you look closer, and I, I, I'm, I'm not planning here to look at the details, but I'll tell you still, on each query, you need to scan the whole database. Um, and so that's still considered not ideal for practitioners. They say like for large databases, it will not be practical. So with all these solutions, we have good security, well, of Still, still different form, but some very good security if we're talking informally, uh, but efficiency, efficiency is, is either very bad or not ideal. Um, there are other class of searchable encryption schemes, uh, which will, I would refer as index-based searchable encryption schemes. And here the setting is is a little bit different. Here we assume that the user, before outsourcing the data, uh, can pre-process the data and create an encrypted index of the data and that <coughs> index is sent to the cloud and used together with each query by the server. And in this setting, so there are various schemes. So it started with the work by Kurt Moller et al. in 2006. And there are, very, there are several recent schemes which some are variations of the old schemes, uh, some are somewhat different. Uh, so, and I think the second, this reference is somewhat broken. I think it's 2014. And there are not as many people, uh, but yeah, sorry, I, oh, it's, there are many people, actually, no, it, it could be right. There are several papers on this blight seer searchable encryption scheme. So it could be right. So I just, now it seemed odd somehow. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this works by Cash at all. So we have Hugo Krauchik here, who is a co-author. He will tell you more about these schemes. So very briefly, uh, these schemes achieve good security. And again, Hugo will tell you more about in what sense it's good security. It's good efficiency. They are really practical. They're, bu they're built, they're tested, um, uh, they work. Uh, so it's just that they, they're not always suitable for applications when, so we need the user really to take care of uh, preparing this index. It seems fine, but uh, some applications, they want more transparency when we really want the user do nothing, just encrypt data on the fly and not work with any index, they may not be suitable, but uh, often the schemes are. Okay, so you will see the details of these schemes later. Um, so outside of crypto community, people worried about this problem too, and they came up with some, several ad hoc solutions. As I mentioned, standard encryption is randomized, and it doesn't work mostly for this reason for searchable encryption. So people thought, OK, so why don't we just use deterministic encryption, right? So if randomized encryption doesn't work, and 
so I'll, I'll tell you how, but you probably already can see if we encrypt each field or each word, let's say, with deterministic encryption, then uh, later to search, we can just re-encrypt the same word and submit it as a query, and the server will just find the same word. So I'll have slides on this later. And also, they, sometimes we want to do more, not just finding the same keyword we want, but doing more advanced queries, for example, sorting the data, or do range queries on alphanumeric data. And then they thought, what if we have order-preserving encryption, where ciphertext preserve the original order of the plain text? Then you could do things you did on plain text. Uh, you can sort ciphertext, you can do range queries by just uh, if encryption is deterministic and order preserving, you, just, you can just re encrypt uh, the range points and ciphertext preserve order, and this will allow you to do pretty much what you did on plain text. And I'll, I'll have slides about this. So, these uh, ideas actually they are not that bad. So, you see that it, it seemed to work. We get functionality and efficiency, efficiency pretty much like it was for plain text, where not there is, the server does whatever it did on plain text, so this is great. Security, since this were not cryptographic work, security was not clear. You can see already it cannot be very strong, but it, the problem first it wasn't defined. Later, uh, there were follow-up works in the cryptographic community, uh, analyzing security of deterministic encryption, and order preserving encryption. Uh, and we'll tell, uh, I'll talk about order preserving encryption later today in more detail. And I'll briefly mention uh, some, the story about the deterministic encryption now. Okay, so let's start about this. So first, let's assume uh, the user does not prepare the index, just want to do basic keyword search. And so, you probably already see how it works, but let's see that deterministic encryption can work. Okay, so let's say the user, only the user or several users, they have the secret key. The server doesn't have any key. The user wants, let's say it's um, some kind of medical data, they want, the user wanna submit records of vital signs of some people. And so we have two fields, names, and some other data, and the user encrypts um, it. Let's say we use deterministic encryption. And actually here, for the second field, if it's not searchable, we can use some strong semantic secure encryption. So the user just encrypts, and later, if uh, the user wants to search for, for records of a particular person, the user just re-encrypts, encrypts the name, but since it's deterministic, uh, the server will just be able to find the ciphertext uh, very easily, probably using some data structure, whatever it uses, uh, some search tree uh, to index the data. Uh, so it will be efficient and the, user, and the server can return the, the whole record and uh, the user can decrypt uh, some, the, the data it was looking for. So very simple, very efficient. And the nice thing, notice that it's a completely transparent solution in the sense there are no changes on the server required. The server doesn't even have to know the data is encrypted. The server just works just like with basic plain text. Okay? And you may notice that for this functionality, you don't really have to use deterministic encryption. Because to search, you, you just may use some deterministic tag, right? You just have to have some function when you process the word using the key uh, and then it can point you to the ciphertext or part of the ciphertext you are looking for. So in a, you don't, if you don't have that field to be decryptable, 
you can just, for example, use some deterministic tag of the plain text, okay? Maybe like a hash function, I don't know about security, we'll talk about it, but something like this, okay? It will, it will still allow the functionality of the search. By the way, please do ask questions at any point, so I'll be happy to answer. Okay, so if we don't want the searchable field to be decryptable, uh, we can use just a tag. Or if we want it to be decryptable, we can use semantic encryption plus the deterministic tag, and we will search by using this deterministic tag. Okay, before we answer the question, what is a good deterministic encryption or what deterministic tag scheme is, we need to talk about what security we're looking for. Or probably what security, what's the best security we can get with this functionality, okay? So, I, I hope you're familiar with the standard INDCPA security for encryption. Who doesn't know what indistinguishability on the chosen plain text attacks are? Who doesn't know? Okay, you know, good. So notice that no NDCPA scheme, uh, sorry, no deterministic encryption can be secure NDCPA scheme. Why? Because deterministic encryption leaks equality, and NDCPA says it's not good. And so on the NDCPA, you know, there are, the user makes pairs of queries, pairs of messages, and sees encryption in one case, encryption of the left message, in the other case, encryption of the right message, if encryption is deterministic, the user can always tell whether it's the left message is encrypted or the right message is encrypted by making pairs of <coughs> queries, and just two queries, two pairs are enough here, so that on the left the messages are the same, and on the right the messages are distinct, and then looking at the two ciphertexts, the, the ciphertexts are the same, the user knows it was the left message encrypted, and uh, if the ciphertexts are distinct, the user would know that it was the right message uh, encrypted, which means no deterministic encryption is INDCPA, and it's understandable because INDCPA says no information is leaked, but here, for functionality, we wanna leak equality. Okay, so, but then, what is the, what notion of security can we use for deterministic encryption? So we could use the, the PRF notion we use for security of block ciphers, but it may be a little bit of overkill because we don't necessarily need the whole ciphertext to look random. And we, we could modify DCPA definition to be suitable for deterministic encryption. And in, in fact, it was done uh, by Bellaria and all in 2002 for when they defined the notion of security for data security of max, somewhat different, but the definition works. To make INDCPA work, we just say, sure, if, you may, if two messages repeat, you will be able to tell, so we just disallow repeated, ma oh, sorry. Oi, there is a graphic missing. Thing. Or maybe not, maybe not, no. So I guess I just, so we just use the same INDCPA definition, we just say the adversary is only should make distinct messages, or more precisely, the equality pattern of messages on the left should be the same as the equality pattern of messages on the right. And that the trivial attack I talked about w will not be there. But everything's, but besides equality, we're saying still everything should be leaked, uh, should be hidden, okay? Uh, and then it's suitable for deterministic encryption. Okay, so after we have this definition, who's, again, kind of intuition behind everything but equality is leaked. So, which schemes should we use if we want to use deterministic encryption? Uh, and there are two questions. If we want it to be really encryption, what encryption scheme can be used? If we don't care if we want to use deterministic tag, by the way, the same notion of security will be suitable. What tag can we use? So for tag, it's somewhat easier. So 
any PRF function would work. Uh, and for example, HMAC, it's believed to be a PRF, and it would work. And in fact, that's one recommendation. But what if we wanted, what if we wanted to be decryptable? So, as I said, PRF notion can be fine, but what is the practical encryption scheme? Yeah, if the, each keyword is very short, just a block cipher would work. But let's say, what if my keyword doesn't fit in the block cipher? Then we need to use maybe some um, mode of operation, block cipher mode of operation, but which one? We have, as I said, we have CBC mode, we have counter mode, but they, they, they're known to be PRFs. Well, not with the counter, but with the random card. But the, they're not deterministic. They're randomized, and this wouldn't work. So what if we need, but we need deterministic mode of operation. So if we f fix the IVs, let's say if we take the standard CBC scheme and fix the IV. Let's say the IV is always fixed at maybe even like all zero, so like it's not there. Then we get a deterministic mode of operation, right? But it will not satisfy the notion of definition I mentioned. Do you see why? Can someone see why? So maybe I'll just, I don't have a slide, but let's say, so this is the standard, well, CBC mode. So we have a message blocks and we have a block cipher. And then we chain and so forth, right? So in the standard encryption, this is randomized. We don't want this. So maybe we just fix it to zeros. Basically, it's like it's not there. And then we just have this part. It's deterministic. It's searchable, but it's not secure under ID distinct CPA. Can you see why? Right, so we want nothing but equality of the whole message to be leaked, but this mode would leak equality of the prefixes. If the first block is the same, we will see it and we don't want this. So it's not quite good, right? So very good. So any idea how to fix this? We still may have an encryption mode, but which will not have this weakness. And it's not, the solution is not complex, that's why I'm asking, like, maybe you see an idea. Okay, so the suggestion is, and here's a generic solution, but which works for any uh, encryption mode. So, what, for example, talking about CBC, uh, we would use the IV, but it will not be random. It will be a function of the whole message. So what we want is that IV to look random for each new message. If the whole message is the same, we want IV to be the same, then the whole thing will be deterministic. and uh, if the message uh, is new, then we want IV to be random. And what function does that? PRF, right? So if we use a PRF function of the whole message, HMAC, for example, which I mentioned, if you do HMAC of the message first and use it as IV for this mode, it would work. If the whole message is the same, the MAC will be the same. The whole encryption will be deterministic. And if the message is new, a MAC would look like a random function, will work as an IV. And one can prove this in general. If you take any INDCP randomized encryption scheme, and CBC was just one example, and take a PRF function, for example, HMAC, of the message and use it as the randomness for that randomized encryption, then you can get uh, ID distinct CPA 
uh, deterministic encryption scheme. So I don't want to sound like deterministic encryption is the greatest, very secure, very efficient solution for searchable encryption, even though it is provable secure in some way, and it's obviously very efficient, because as you can see, I've mentioned that it's secure, but equality is leaked for functionality. And leak inequality may sound like it's something unavoidable for how I presented it, but in some way it's not unavoidable. You can use totally different schemes. And leak inequality may be a serious problem, and tomorrow I'm going to talk about attacks exploiting this vulnerability. Just Leak inequality gives rise to statistical attacks, and it may not be good. Oh, okay. So, and just a few, yeah, two minutes. Uh, just very briefly, but Hugo will talk more about index-based keyword search schemes. And just to say, just to give you a very rough idea, uh, if you want to prepare an index, and let's say no encryption here, and here it's more suitable for uh, some documents with keywords, but can also use, can be used for relational database. So if we have a list of keywords, uh, the inverted index will look, it will just, for each keyword, it will list documents where they appear, very simple. And then if you know the keyword, you just can look up the documents. So, but we want security. What if we deterministically encrypt the keywords? Or oh, again, we have a tag, okay? So now you can probably just decrypt the keyword that that's some security, but security is not ideal. Why? There are several issues here. So first we see how many keywords. Then we can locate the most popular keywords, right? We just see, and then we see which keywords overlap and which documents. So not very good. So we can also add more encryption, and we can encrypt the, the document's IDs as well. But still, we still see the same thing. We see which keywords. We cannot decrypt them, but we at least can locate, and maybe we can hack those, the most popular ones, and you see the number of keywords. Uh, but in the... Recent schemes, uh, so index would really look not like I presented, even though the ideas are somewhat similar. Uh, but it will look like one file, you can adjust one parse very well, and this is good. It's not clear whether encryptions of documents or encryptions of keywords. If you query, access pattern is revealed. You see what's being accessed, but this is true for most schemes. Uh, and addition would look just adding some new uh, chunk ciphertext at the end, so it's good. Um, so it's about time, right? Okay, so that, that's basically my last slide. And again, uh, Hugo, will you talk about the, the ideas of this? Then I can leave it because I'm running. Okay, so there are simple but neat ideas which, of course, need uh, a lot of work to build on. Uh, to make it work, uh, but we'll talk about this later. So that's it for now. So and later today I'll talk about order-preserving encryption. Thank you.